A very good day to one and all. So welcome to another session on the various topics in pediatric surgery. So today we'll be discussing about a very important cause of intestinal obstruction in the newborn period called meconium ileus. So with regards to meconium ileus, these are few names that we cannot we cannot help but mention. So the first one is Baron von Rokitansky. So Baron von Rokitansky, this gentleman here was the first person to document a fetal death because of meconium peritonitis. Landsteiner, Landsteiner here, was the first one to describe that, to coin the term meconium ileus. Fankerny, Dr. Fankerny, he is the one who actually described cystic fibrosis in a child with pancreatic insufficiency. And Anderson put two and together, two and two together to form four, by saying that there is a common association of meconium ileus with cystic fibrosis. Rosa Mahel, he is a very important person because he was the one who was able to localize the CFTR gene to chromosome 7. Dr. Noblet, his name cannot be forgotten with regard to meconium ileus because he was the one who propounded non-operative management of meconium ileus. With a brief uh, description of the various people who were responsible for landmark findings and uh, alterations and lines of management with meconium ileus. We will proceed to next component which is introduction. So what exactly is meconium ileus? So by definition, it is nothing but a neonatal intestinal obstruction caused by inspissated meconium at the level of terminal ileum or distal ileum. There are two different types of meconium ileus. One would be uncomplicated or simple meconium ileus. Second is complicated or complex meconium ileus. Simple meconium ileus is always much more common when compared to complicated meconium ileus. But complicated meconium ileus is the one which is more commonly detected antenatally. So late presentation. So certain children can present beyond neonatal period with features suggestive of meconium ileus and these children are said to have meconium ileus equivalent or distal intestinal obstruction or distal ileal obstruction syndrome. So uh, the incidence of uh, meconium ileus seems to be very high among Caucasians. Okay, the reason for this higher incidence among the whites it's not known. Initially it was postulated that 80 to 90 percentage of children with meconium ileus have an associated cystic fibrosis. The strength of this association between meconium ileus and cystic fibrosis has somewhat weakened over the past few years and recent data state that 20 to 40 percentage of children with meconium ileus do not have cystic fibrosis. There is equal incidence of meconium ileus among male and female children. So if among siblings, if the first child has cystic fibrosis with meconium ileus, there is a 30% chance that the second sibling can also have a similar clinical association. However, if the first child has only cystic fibrosis, there is only a 6% chance that the second child can have a similar clinical association. So what is the etiopathogenesis of meconium ileus? So there are two important events that we need to know about with regard to meconium ileus. One would be hyperviscous mucus which is secreted by the intestinal glands. And there is associated pancreatic exocrine insufficiency. Among both these, the most important component which, which seems to predispose to meconium ileus would be the presence of hyperviscous mucus secreted by the intestinal glands. So why is this mucus hyperviscous? It is because there is increased permeability to water loss by from these secretions which are there. And hence already the thick secretions which have been secreted becomes thicker. A second cause is that there is an alteration in to and fro movement of water from the extravascular space resulting in failure of dilution of normal uh, contents within the cell causing them to become toxic and damaging the cell in which it is present. So uh, why is this mucus so thick? Even before this all these will make the mucus, already thick mucus even thicker the two reasons that I gave you. But why is the mucus which is being secreted or secretion which is being secreted by the intestinal gland so thick? It is because its composition is completely altered. So meconium in a child with meconium ileus has decreased water, sodium, potassium and magnesium. 
it has decreased trypsin and protein bound carbohydrates. On the other hand, meconium seems in people children with meconemia seem to have an increased albumin content, mucoproteins and calcium. So you find, you find that the amount of protein that is present within the meconium is said to be the reason why it is very thick in the first place itself. It becomes thicker subsequently because of the two reasons that I told you. So the initial thick secretion is because of the increased levels of proteins. In fact, protein content can be as, as high as 70 to 90 percent in a child with meconium milius compared to only 7 percent in a normal child. An important, uh, like I said, cystic fibrosis is an important condition associated with meconium milius. And the gene which is responsible, uh, which gets damaged or which gets mutated in cystic fibrosis is the CFTR gene, which is cystic fibrosis transmembrane regulator gene, which was first discovered by Collins. This CFTR gene has been mapped onto chromosome 7, long arm of chromosome 7, onto the 31st loci. There are thousands of mutations which can occur with regard to the CFTR gene, but the most common mutation would be delta F508 mutations, which is seen in 70 percentage of children with cystic fibrosis. The gene product of this gene, which is CFTR, regulates transport of chloride in and out of cells. It affects all epithelium line structures, especially which includes the airway, pancreatic duct is affected, reproductive system is affected, biliary tree is affected. So all those tubular structures which have secretions tend to get affected. So as a result of this, there is delayed clearance of mucus from these structures resulting in all these structures getting involved to a large extent. Now the CFTR gene has function which varies based on its location. For example, in the sweat gland. In the sweat gland, it is responsible for the absorption of sodium and chloride. In meconium ileus, what happens is this absorption of sodium and chloride is affected and more sodium and chloride is excreted out in the sweat.